Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and move on along here. So here's, here's the summary of the world so far. So Silverlight 2.0, very different from 1.0. The big new additions is that we're still going to be able to build, essentially, really interactive web content. But the addition now of a full-blown object model, total object orientation, miniature BCL, right, miniature CLR. So now, let's talk about actually programming with this beast. Right? How many folks have heard of something called Kazaml? <laughs> oh, gosh. You gotta get your hands on Kazaml. This is a great tool. Um, <laughs> yeah, I suppose it comes from like Kazam, right? Ala Kazam. Um, Kazaml is a free tool. You can just download it for free on the web right now. Okay, it's not built by Microsoft per se, but it's written by some guy that thought, hey, here's a great tool. Kazaml allows us to type in XAML and have it rendered real time as we're typing stuff. Right? This is an awesome tool as you're learning XAML. Because if you're going to do Silverlight, whether you like it or not, you're going to be doing XAML too, at least to some level. Okay? So the neat thing about Kazaml is that you can go ahead and build code snippets. Right? You can save them out and use them later. And uh, it's just a really neat way to kind of get a flavor of what something will look like when you put it inside that web plugin. Now, if you do download Kazaml, which you should, right? Uh, you'll find two versions. And the version that you're going to want to download is the beta version, which, as you might guess, has Silverlight support. Yep. Okay? So you can kind of say, give me the Silverlight XAML, not the WPF XAML. Right? And again, and this was just something that actually kind of ticked me off, but what do you do? Remember that the XAML that we use in WPF ain't the XAML that we use in Silverlight. Real darn close, but enough differences to make us all completely insane. Right? So just be aware of that. So I just want to kind of show you Kazaml. And I want to show you some default XAML that I've already typed up. Just for those that haven't played around with WPF or Silverlight before, just so you can see how cool this markup actually can be for us. Right? So let me go to fire up Kazaml. And uh, this, you know, again, this is not a tool which was built by Microsoft. So it is going to be more of the open source flair. You know, it's not literally open source, but it's not like a supported tool to any great extent. Um, here is the actual, I actually have this one open down here. Here's what it looks like when you first open it up. Okay? Uh, one little thing that you might not know is that it also has the ability to show windows, not just pages. But when you do that, you have to hit the F5 key. It will just put up a little default window for you. Okay? Um, usually people just type pages because whatever they type in here will be rendered down in here. So I could say, give me a button. And there's my big button, right? I could say, make it a certain height of 40 and a width of 120, right? And then make the content say, cool. Oh, too many, there we go. Okay. Now let me show you some kind of prefabricated markup. Okay, remember what we said, right? Using XAML, you can start to render out some pretty intricate stuff. And one of the benefits of Silverlight 2.0 is that we have a real set of real controls, right? So these controls have been intentionally designed to, you know, look and feel a lot like their WPF counterpart, right? So the same sorts of things that we might be able to do on a desktop program, much of that same functionality is going to be here for a Silverlight applet. And again, remember, it's not a verbatim copy. There might be a control in WPF, which is not currently in Silverlight. But again, the documentation would show you all the controls that we do have. Right? And for those that are in the know about WPF, remember, you don't like these controls, you just restyle it. Right? You just make your own control template, and then voila, I have a round button with a glowing radius, and I didn't write any code for it. Let me show you this. Okay, here's a really ugly diagram, ugly picture, <laughs> right? Um, expressing vector graphics, right? Again, could we do vector graphics before? Well, of course, but what's the benefit here? Well, I didn't write any code for it, right? You know, this was generated with a tool, right? So I can use a Photoshop-like looking tool. The tool generates that markup for me in the background, okay? 
And so that, again, is very geared towards a person that has some graphical skill. Data binding. Now, there's a huge data binding part of WCF or WPF as well as Silverlight, right? And the data binding engine is very, very flexible to the point where you can do it all through markup as well. So here's a little example of doing some data binding. Don't get hung up on the XAML. We'll talk about some XAML syntax in a little bit. But I'm basically binding here, right, the, uh, the value of this slider to render out this internal rectangle. And again, could you do this without XAML? Absolutely. But this is all being done through markup, right? So it's not just rendering out static images that don't change. I can actually inject in real functionality. In fact, using something called triggers, you can actually basically intercept events through markup. Right? So you can do things like saying, when this control loads, start this animation. Right? For example, this. Okay? Here's a really simple animation, which is moving a shape on a little wave right, through markup. And I'm basically repositioning the size and the location of this guy inside of something called a canvas, which is just a container. Okay? So as I said earlier in this little talk, remember that markup is ultimately an illusion. Right? What is really happening there? Well, this tool is actually taking that markup using something which is called a XAML reader and a XAML writer. It can suck it up into an in-memory object model and then put it in that page up above. Okay, so we're actually looking at an allocated type here, basically, <laughs> right? Which keeps getting created and killed as a type in different XAML. Right? So as you can see from this little area here, too, you know, code snippets, you know, cute little tools to kind of give you a way to play around with stuff. So if you haven't downloaded Kazaml, do yourself a favor. If you're serious about Silverlight and WPF, this is where you're going to want to go, at least to start tinkering. It's free. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's one benefit. And it's just it's, it's meant to be a, a quick tool. Okay. Right? You know, Blend has so many features you can lose your mind. And Blend's a complicated thing to learn. Right? Really complicated. <laughs> you know, this is just type your XAML, see how it looks. Just a great way to get uh, simple tests. Okay, so that's kind of the, the, the gist about Kazaml.